What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today we're gonna be doing a long overdue video. Today, we're gonna be talking about the best subcompact pistols on the market. We're gonna go over the 10 best, or at least what I think is the best based on our review criteria, reliability, accuracy, durability, parts, availability, holsters, accessories, and I wanted to get a few from different price ranges and from different companies as well, so you won't see a lot of repeats on this video. Now, these are 10 of the best subcompact pistols on the market, but it was difficult to order them, so if your favorite's a 10, don't be too mad. All of these guns are good. Some of them are gonna be better for me, and some of these are gonna be better for you, and some people just have bad taste. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now, before we get into the video, I do wanna mention what subcompacts are. So basically, the definition is super vague. What we're gonna classify as subcompacts on this list is something smaller than a Glock 19, but bigger than a P365. <laughs> so a Glock 19 is like the quintessential compact gun, and that's what I think of when I think of compacts. And when I think of a subcompact, I think of a Glock 26 style gun. Basically, this is going to be a small gun that takes a full-size magazine. Now we're gonna bend the rules a little bit for a couple, but for the most part, that's what I mean by subcompact. But all these guns are gonna be great for carry. They're all gonna be small, light, accurate, and fast and you're gonna have to choose which one of these is right for you for your ergonomics and your preferences we are gonna start out with number 10 here with a trusty companion the VP9 SK it is interesting because it has more of a European set of ergonomics to it but it does have excellent reliability durability and the accuracy is really really good on this subcompact now you get 12 plus 1 and that is a pretty good capacity for a subcompact three inch barrel basically all these are going to be three inch barrels this one is a polymer frame striker fired pistol with front and rear slide serrations we have the cocking fins and we have some high definition sights all of that for a price of around 800 bucks msrp but i promise you you won't pay that i paid around 600 for this guy so you're just going to have to shop around now the benefits of the h and vp9 are that it's a pre cock striker trigger so you get a really good trigger out of the box which aids in accuracy, especially if you suck. It helps out with trigger control. <laughs> and uh, you also get top-notch accessories, in my personal opinion. However, you don't get an optics mount with this one, and I, I'm pretty sure there are some available, but that is a downside to this. But what you do get is the grip panels and the back straps, and probably the most adjustable grip you can buy. HK is a very reliable company overall. They make really reliable guns. And in my experience, I've had no difference with the VP9. Now in at number nine, we're gonna put in an old classic. It would be difficult for me not to add this, even though it kind of comes up short compared to some of the more modern guns, simply because of what this pistol has done over time. This is the Walter PPK. Now this one is in 380, although you can get them in a variety of calibers. Uh, this is obviously James Bond's gun, and that gives it a cool factor that is second to none. However, the reason why it's on this list is because it is one of the most carried handguns in history, and it has been one of the most popular concealed carry guns like i said of the past hundred years very old gun very old design you get a single stack 380 capacity of only seven plus one however you get to carry it in style and this gun is super accurate i've shot these out to 100 yards which is pretty ridiculous considering the rudimentary sights however the trigger is absolutely excellent one thing i would knock it on i would say the capacity is an issue and the recoil impulse on this can be a bit stout for a uh, 380 just simply because it's a fairly snappy gun to shoot but it's reliable it's accurate and it's cool as shit now in at number seven we're gonna go with a really pricey gun but you get a lot of functionality you get a lot of performance for the price and that's gonna be the Wilson combat EDC x9 now that subcompact is a gun we had for review last year and I couldn't have loved it more 2011 platform which is great it has a double stack capacity of 15 rounds with a three inch barrel and a weight of only 27 ounces making it along the same weight as a Glock 19 but you get all of the awesomeness of the 2011 you get that great trigger you get an optics mounting system very slick controls and with the edc x9 it's a modified 2011 so you don't get any grip safety or anything that you don't want you just get that awesome trigger awesome accuracy awesome reliability and it's really really fast faster than most if not all the guns on the list besides maybe one 
really incredible piece of machinery, although it is going to cost you, and that's why it's down a little bit lower on the list, at a staggering MSRP of $3,000. It is by far the most expensive gun on this list, but I think it deserves a spot because it can outshoot almost every gun on this list as well. Certainly not a gun you get for your first gun, but if you are a 2011 guy, you shoot a lot of competition, you want a small carry gun to match that performance, this is a great way to go. In at number seven, we have the OG of OGs, probably the original subcompact, or at least the original popular one, and that's gonna be the Glock 26, my fat baby. Now, I love the Glock 26, and it served me very well. This was actually a previous carry gun of mine for years. I had a Generation 4 in OD Green. Love that gun, super reliable, fast, and overall, one of the best guns ever made throughout history, although coming up a little bit short to its modern peers, which you're gonna see a little bit higher on this list. Now, that's my opinion. If you love the Glock, I mean, you can't get much better gun, so don't hate me in the comment section for putting it low, but I love this gun personally, but it is lacking by comparison to some of the modern guns with the trigger, the sights, the grip options. This one doesn't even have an optics mounting system on it. <laughs> it doesn't have a rail or anything. And you just get the bare bones with the Glock 26. Basically the same gun they've been putting out since the 1980s or early 90s. Now this was the original like undercover PD gun because it's super reliable, super durable, and you can count on this guy. It does have a heavy trigger, does have very basic sights, but it has a track record of excellence that'll make you feel all warm and cozy when you carry it. The MSRP on the Glock 26 these days is around 550. They come in some between 550 and 600, depending on where you get them. 21 ounce overall weight, making it one of the lighter guns on the list, which is great. And then obviously with the Glock, just like the VP9 I didn't mention previous, you get the uh, larger mag capability. So you can run this 10 round flush fit. You can run the Glock 19 mags, which are 15 rounds. You can do the Glock 17 mags, which are 17 rounds. You can do the big sticks too. You can carry uh, quite a capacity with this guy. So I like that. I like that accessories are available. I like that holsters are available, but it does come with basic features out of the box, which again, puts it a little bit lower than some of the other ones. Number six, we are gonna have the second 380, one of my personal favorite guns, especially for the money, the Ruger Security. 380. Now this is a three and a half inch barreled pistol where you get a 10 plus one capacity, but larger mags like 15 rounders are available. You get high definition sights with a blacked out rear, you get slide serrations, you get a good trigger, you get a reliable platform that is super easy to run. And this is what I would consider probably the best overall gun for people with weaker wrists, arthritis, elderly people, smaller stature people. This has very low recoil and it's very easy to use. So easy that I can wrap the slide with just two fingers. Really easy to do, and if your grandma wants to carry guns, she wants to stay strapped or get clapped, this is a good way to go. This gun is only $300 or less, depending on where you find it. Yeah, 380 is a subpar cartridge as far as penetration by nine millimeter, but if you're getting shot by it, I doubt you would notice, and 15 coming at you quick, because this has very low recoil and a very good trigger, you're definitely not gonna be unarmed. It's a good gun, and I think it's a great gun for that certain person out there that's looking for a lower recoil platform or looking for something that they can rack the slide easily, and they don't wanna buy some bullshit Tomcat or some Taurus tipping barrel thing that is just a dumpster fire to begin with. So if you have arthritis, check this out or maybe the Smith & Wesson EZ and avoid the gimmicks. All right, in at number five, the Staccato CS. Now, I'm already breaking my previous rule because technically this is a Micro 9 because it runs a stack and a half magazine as opposed to the double stack, but this gun is so freaking big that I couldn't consider it a Micro 9 for me personally, and it's actually bigger than the Glock 26 here, so we stuck her in the subcompact category, and I think you're gonna be happy about it anyway. Regardless of what it's classified as, this is a phenomenal gun. Now, this is the second 2011 we put on here, and this is an actual 2011 because it's staccato, and I do love 1911s and that does influence my videos, so if you don't like them, maybe this isn't for you. However, this is a phenomenal gun and it comes with all the features you're gonna want for a carry gun. It has a three inch barrel, a 16 round magazine capacity, so 16 plus one gives you the same capacity as a full size Beretta M9. And an even more shootable package, in my personal opinion, for a much lighter weight. 23 ounces is lighter than a Glock 19 and you get two of those magazines out of the box. You get front slide serration, Epic sights, optics mounting system, 
Ambi Safety, a very, very good uh, grip safety with a memory pad. Great texture on the grip here itself. And then you have an included magwell for your magazines. And the gun itself, because it's a 2011, shoots incredibly well. Not only was this reliable through our testing, one of the more accurate micro nines we've ever shot, but the trigger is just as good as the larger staccatos. So check this out. The reset and the pull is on par with the Staccato P, which makes it legendarily fast for a very small gun. And personally, I like that. Now again, just like the Wilson, you're gonna get a lot of performance, but it's gonna cost you, but not quite as much. These come in between somewhere between 2000 and 2500, depending what features you get. And whether that's worth it or not is up to you, but if it's not, there's other cheaper guns on this list, so don't worry about it too much. One of the downsides is you're gonna get less availability of these guns, they're gonna be harder to find, they're gonna be more expensive, and then holsters is gonna be a bit of an issue, but luckily they will fit in the C2 holsters, at least this one does for me, so you can go that route, although still minimal aftermarket uh, support for this by comparison to let's say a Glock or a CZ. In at number four, the P365 AXG Legion. Now this is a gun that's very similar in size to the X Macro, but it's just made of metal. It has the Legion treatment. My wife and I shot this uh, a couple weeks ago, and I originally had the Spectre Comp on this list, but I put this one on instead because this one's a little bit bigger and it kind of fits the subcompact better. I know they're still gonna classify this as a Micro 9 because it has the stack and half, but this gun's freaking huge. And I can show you that it is, in fact, similar if not larger to the Glock 26. So here we are, putting it on the subcompact list. Now the AXG Legion is around $1,000, so it's gonna be twice the price of your average P365, but it does come with three 17 round magazines, and it has a significant increase in capability in my personal opinion. It's gonna be a little bit bigger to carry, but it does come with a full pick rail. We do have an integrated comp right there in the slide, as you can see that. We have slide serrations front and rear. We have an optics mount for the EPS carry, the HD sights that SIG is known for, but then we also have this cool green Cerakote that you get on like the Legion series, the 226, stuff like that. I love that personally. You get a better trigger for my personal opinion. You get these G10 inlay grips with the aluminum frame and then you get checkering on the outside with an included magwell. And it kind of turns your P365 into a little mini race pistol. And I like that a lot because it's a small, tiny little carry gun, well, tiny by comparison to like a full-size 2011, that does shoot like a full-size gun. I mean, I would argue that I could shoot this faster than your average Glock 17. It's got a better trigger, it's got the comp, and it's got the red dot, and it has the same capacity as the Glock 17, which is really crazy. I do love innovation, and I gotta say, definitely a golden age of firearms when you can just pick something up like this that you didn't even know existed. And the macro was one of my favorite guns of last year, so of course the upgraded macro I'm gonna like even better. Now this will fit into the SIG P365 macro holster, so it should be easy for you to find uh, holsters and parts for this, which is nice. And honestly, you don't really need to add anything out of the box anyway, because it's already super slicked up. And on top of that, it looks real sexy. So if you're looking for a new pistol or you're just into the 365, I would check this one out. Now, we're in the top three here, and it's kind of hard to choose between these three. They're all reputable, and they're all very good guns, and they've all passed with flying colors in our tests. So any one of these three are gonna be good to go. It's only gonna be personal preference. Now, at number three, I had to put the M&P 2.0. Pretty fast. Well, that went a little too quick. And now the reason why I put the M&P at number three is because this is technically not a subcompact because it does have a much larger compact style grip. However, it's as close as you can kind of get in the uh, M&P world these days for the 2.0s. So I added it anyway because there's gonna be a lot of M&P fans out there that want something bigger than a shield, but smaller than an M&P compact. So I give you the M&P compact 3.6. So it's kind of like an X frame where you get a larger grip and a shorter slide, which works for me because this is the part that bothers me anyway. However, the grip is nice because you can you can pull this out and draw this super quickly. There is a very, very positive grip because you get the 2.0 texture. You can get them with the safety or without, and if you can only find them with the safety, you can just take the safety off. We get raised uh, suppressor height sights. We have the mount for the EPS carry, Picatinny rail, and then you get the brand new 2.0 flat face trigger, which is only available in the 2.0 series and I, I love this trigger. My previous hate on the M&P was really the old trigger they had in the original Gen 1s. I hated that. I always had to replace those with Apex, whereas Smith has come around and they figured out they have a good gun with kind of a rough trigger, so now they have 
the good trigger. And it's hard not to love this gun. Reliable, accurate, 15 round magazine capacity and everything you want, nothing you don't. 28 ounces, 600 bucks. Overall, one of the best on the market. Now going forward with number two, I feel like you get the same performance, but a little bit less money. And that's gonna be the CZ P10S. This is the three inch version of the P10 series and obviously it does take the P10 magazines. So all of those will work great. You get a 12 plus one capacity out of the box with this bad boy for almost the price of a Taurus. You get this for an MSRP of 400, but I got mine for less than 300 bucks. I'm surprised more people don't own it. It has an upgraded trigger. It's the trigger's gonna make the lock cry. It has a very low slide mass, very low recoil and pulse. It has front and rear slide serration, good texture. You can get super high on it, which is really nice. You can see up here, look how high you can get on the gun and how easily you can control recoil. It has ambi controls, which is cool, a swappable uh, magazine release, and all the parts, holsters, and everything are available along with larger magazines because the P10 and P10F are a pretty big hit. I would consider this one of the best guns you can get in the subcompact genre, and it was super close to taking the number one spot. The only reason it didn't is because, sadly, I don't carry this, and I do carry this. <laughs> this is my number one. This is the Canic TP9 SC Elite. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you'll know that I love this gun. And it's been number one on a bunch of my lists. It's for a good reason. I think it's a great gun for the money, and it's hard to beat it still. Even though it's been out for the past five years or so, I don't really think anything on the market has eclipsed it for the price to performance to availability ratio. Now, this has a three inch barrel, MSRP of 400, but again, can be found for less. 24 ounce overall weight, so it's gonna be the same exact size and weight as the P10S. You're just gonna get different ergonomics, and in my opinion, even a slightly better trigger. You check this trigger out. Wow, that's so good. And the reset's incredible. On top of that, you get a dedicated shield RMS mount, you get night sights, front and rear serrations, you get a Cerakoted slide with a tri-colored look, which I think looks dope, a Picatinny rail, and then back straps with uh, three magazines out of the box as well. Well, two or three, I don't remember. I haven't bought this gun in five years. Overall, if I think I was gonna buy just one gun on this list, it would be hard not to buy this one. And the reason why is, is because you get reliability, accuracy, you get parts availability, but the best thing about this gun is you don't have to pay that $3,000 to get that excellent trigger. You can get it with an MSRP of 400 bucks. I'm a big fan of this, and it has, and I imagine will continue to impress me. I'd like to see your list. What's your favorite subcompact on the market? Especially if it's something I didn't have on this list because I'm always interested in trying new stuff. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please support our Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.